Hello learners, I am Dr. N. Johnson, Assistant Professor working in the Department of Lifelong Learning, Ayogappa University, Karaikudi. Today, we are going to discuss about the topic namely the old school approach. What does the old school approach means? How a school is playing a pivotal role in the development of the nation? What are the requisite conditions a school should possess? What are the facilities the school should have over for the development of the children? All the basic amenities of the required for the school should be provided so that the teaching learning process takes place in an effective manner. Now, let us discuss about what are the priorities area that should be provided for the school. A school basically it is a place designated for teaching and learning in a group. A school is described as a place where the courses of study is or are prescribed or recognized by the government either it might be the central government or it might be the state or a university or a board constituted by the law or any other agencies authorized on this behalf by the central or state government and which satisfies one or more of the authorities in regards to its standard or efficiency. This was said by Pajankar and Pajankar in the year 2010 and apart from that this mode of school there is also a formal system of evaluation and examinations are also conducted over in the school. I will say you about some of the points to be kept over in mind of what a school is or how a school is should be. In simple terms, a school is a place that is adequately equipped with teachers. As students engaged in the learning process, it has a building with proper space and equipped with rooms, furniture, playgrounds, toilets, drinking water facilities and other resources. And a school should provide an environment for, a, for an all round development of the child's personality. A school has to be within the reasonable distance for the children to have access to it. This implies that if schools are not located in the nearby habitation where children reside, then they are not likely to complete schooling even if they are formally enrolled. The distance of the schools from the habitation is a great and grave problem especially in the rural and tribal parts of the country. The most important essential element to be taken over are the three important factors namely the first is the access, second factor is the equity and the third factor is the quality. Now we have seen over what is access mean. It is the access is nothing but the distance it should be accessible for the children to have education. The right to education act, what does it say over? The right to education act provides children access to elementary schools within the defined area or limits of the neighborhood. The RTE act also makes it mandatory for all the states and union territories to arrive at a clear picture of the availability of the schools within the defined areas or the limits of the neighborhood. Girls on the way to a school near Korapet on the Andhra Orissa border, these students walk 6 kilometers to reach the school. There are many case studies which have been taken over in regard to access. And second case study is that in village Dodapura of Savai Madapu in Rajasthan, the school is located on a separate hill 
small children find it difficult to get there. During the monsoon, the path is under water and the school remains closed for weeks or even months at a time. The second case study, we have seen the problem pertaining to the access and there are also many case studies. There is no school in Chakthoda, Sultanpur district in Uttar Pradesh. The government school in the neighboring village of Gyanpur has to be approached through the bazaar. This makes it unsafe for the children and compounds the distance problem. Another case study is that the school is in Adarwan, Siddhi, Madhya Pradesh, serves many villages. Most habitations are 2 to 3 kilometers away from the school. These are all the problems of the school in a remote area or the accessible of the students is very far to the school. Next comes the next parameter namely equity. One of the major goals of Sarva Siksha Abhiyan is to bridge the gender and social category gaps and reach out to all the children in an equitable manner. What is equitable states that it is to be of fair, quality of being fair. We should treat them in a fair way, impartial way. That is the equitable manner means. The right based and entitlement approach in right to education addresses the issues of exclusion in a holistic manner. And equity issues, even before entering the school, exclusion may begin. Parents may discourage the children, especially girls, fearing harassment on the way to the school or rebuck in the classroom. The issue of gender parity cuts across all the categories of disadvantaged and deprived children. Children from the tribal areas may face the problems typical to their backgrounds. Similarly, other categories of children, namely Muslims, labor, urban deprived peoples and migrants. Children with special needs, namely CWSN forms a very important group under EQT issues as per right to education provisions, which has to be provided for quality inclusive education. Some of the SSA interventions are NPEGEL that is the National Program for Education of Girls at the elementary level and Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyalaya, Mahila Samakya. All those programs are mooted out for the promotion of the girls in giving out the education and this is the intervention strategies of SSA. Access is also thus an issue of equity and is a key challenge that needs to be addressed. Efforts at equity also impinge on quality of education and both are intrinsically linked as per the right to education act to achieve equity the quality of education imparted needs to be improved. This implies a focus on various aspects of quality namely the curriculum, textbooks, teaching learning materials, use of classroom spaces, infrastructures and teachers training. Right to education act. As per the right to education act to achieve equity the quality of education imparted needs to be improved. Some support measures that need to be looked at are the transport facilities, escorting the children to the school and providing proper counselling helping them to balance the domestic burdens with school and academic support, rendering academic support for the students by the teachers and parental community support should also be there. Next comes how a teacher should follow the inclusive approach. How a teacher should follow an inclusive approach is very much vital in the school education. As a teacher, you must ensure not to adapt any exclusionary practices while dealing with the children. Some other features that impaired inclusive practices are seating arrangements, disadvantaged categories children sometimes are made to sit in the back benches, 
not allowing them to participate in the school function and activities, not speaking to them, not checking their warmer classwork, denying them to use the school facilities like water resources, school canteens and others, asking them to do menial tasks like cleaning the school premises, toilets, etc. should be strictly avoided by the teacher community. And a teacher should follow an inclusive approach as I said before. Next third parameter which comes over is the quality. When I say quality, it is an holistic concept and RTE Act 2009 especially mentions the eight factors that should be considered while formulating the curriculum and evaluation procedures. These eight factors are based on child centric assumption. We are living in an era of child centric curriculum and is also forming the basis of national policy on education 1986-1992 and national curriculum framework 2005. Now, what are the eight factors we are confining to? Let us have a quick glimpse of that. First is the conformity with the constitutional values, all round development of the child, building up the child's knowledge, potentiality and talent, the development of physical and mental abilities to the fullest extent, learning through activities, discovery and exploration in a child friendly and in child centric method, the child's mother tongue serving as far as practicable as the medium of instruction, making the child free from fear, trauma and anxiety, a comprehensive and continuous evaluation of the child's knowledge and the ability to apply it. Some of the school resources we have to think over and equip those resources. They are called as the physical facilities available for the school. Number one is safe drinking water, toilets, it should be separate for boys and girls of course and the parking space for children's vehicle, boundary wall or fencing around the school premises and children with disabilities they should be given a proper seating arrangement and ramps, the number of teachers employed should be adequate and classrooms and playgrounds should be properly maintained. Now let us discuss about what are the facilities for midday meal. This is, uh, let us have a history of this midday meal scheme. It dates back to the, from 1925 when the program was launched for the disadvantaged children in the Madras Municipal Corporation. The scheme gained popularity and in the year 1990-91, the scheme was implemented in the 12 states. The main objective is to ensure a balanced and nutritious diet to all the children in the school. The midday meal, the school meal programs, it helps to boost the enrollment and is effective in promoting the attendance. It is an incentive not only for the children but also for the parents. The midday meal scheme serves as an attraction for the children who are otherwise reluctant to the attend the school. Another important aspect of the midday meal scheme is the nutritional impact. This is a very important factor, the nutritional impact and socialization process. These two are most important which imbibes, which strengthen through this midday meal scheme. Now, let us discuss about the facilities for drinking water, toilets, playgrounds and sports, fa sports facilities. Provisions in the school made mandatory through RT Act 2009 are the provision of for drinking water and sanitation facilities in the school premises and kitchen shed sh should be properly built over or it should be there and it should also be monitored well. Boundary wall or fencing, incorporation of child friendly features, provision of toilets, urinals, facilities for recreation and sports for the children. Now let us discuss about an important approach that is the child centered approach. A school should be child centric one. The 
children should learn in a joyful method. When they learn in a joyful way, their enrollment and as well as their attendance will be increasing and whatever knowledge they are getting, it will be sustained in the minds of the students forever. It will be the cherishing moments for the children. And another approach is the problem solving where the students formulate hypothesis, suggest solution, conduct experiments, generalize, arrive at a solution and compare the results. Another one important child centric approach that I wish to uh, lay emphasis is constructivism. What this constructivism means? Here the learners construct new knowledge based on the previous experience. Therefore, this child centered method when they construct knowledge on their own, when they do over, when they follow this method, it will be a cherishing moments for them and it will, they can participate actively in the classroom situation. Many experiments have been conducted in various parts of the country that encourage the child centered pedagogy. For example, activity based approach is being practiced in Tamil Nadu and Nalikali program of Karnataka. This is mainly it has been mooted out in the Mysore and it has gained momentum. It used multi sensory approach of the children. They made the children to actively participate through this Nalikali program and it has gained reputation and it has gone over to different parts of the Karnataka also. And likewise, Ozanga Bar Science Teaching Program of Karnataka, that was also a program which has gained reputation in child centric method following the child centered approach. And while following the child centered approach, one should understand the learner first. The Right to Education Act recognizes the importance of adopting child friendly child centered pedagogy for the holistic development of the child's personality. The various aspects of the learner in which the teacher should be knowledgeable about are physical development and health of the learner. Then comes the mental abilities and potential of the learner. Learner differs in the linguistic, spatial, mathematical, musical, kinesthetical abilities, suitable learning experiences can then be provided to build upon the existing levels. And the culture, learning is greatly influ influenced by the cultural experiences of the learner, that is the experiences gained at home, in the community and in the school and with the peer group. The RT Act redefined the concept of assessment by considering it to be an integral part of the teaching learning process rather than and the end of the process of activity. The goal of assessment is to provide continuous feedback on the learning achievement. Under RTE provisions, no child can be detained or declared failed in any class. And child centered pedagogy as envisioned under the RTE Act is consistent with the National Curriculum Framework 2005, which provides for continuous and comprehensive evaluation. The prevalent system of examination is incompatible with the concept of the child centered pedagogy. Now, let us quickly recapitulate what we have studied over. We have studied what is the meaning and the concept of the school, how the school strengthens the teaching learning process. Then comes the three parameters which are very much important for the school system namely access, equity and quality. Then we have seen the various issues regarding the access, equity and quality and what are the SSA, Sarvasik Shah Biyan interventions and the RT Act which supports then comes the school resources, how the school resources should be and where are the school resources should be tightened up or should be developed over for the betterment of the students. And then we have seen about the child centered approach which is which makes the students to learn in a joyful way and 
they are also very much happy through this child centered approach. Here they play an active part, the children they play an active part and the teacher will act as a facilitator, a guide. Thank you for your patience listening.